tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello, let me start with this image. I took it while walking through a forest nearby Cologne and I just bowed down and took this orthogonal photograph of a pond, a tiny pond. It's just a maybe th these dimensions are one and a half meters, not really big, with things floating on that surface in late winter. Now, when you use this as a texture map using the AI standard surface shader in Arnold it, and render it with a an area light, it looks like that. Why is it so glossy all over? Well, because the shader does not know what kind of glossiness you want. And when you go to the standard surface shader, I only map the color and the specular weight is one. I can reduce this to zero. And when I select the shader, you see uh, a more tolerable version of this whole thing. It doesn't change uh, the reflectiveness uh, depending on our viewing angle and that's that would be a typical thing that something is wrong in this scene but uh, anyway uh, I want to show you something else now which has to do with this menu here and only one thing is of interest right now substance and batch import that's what we're gonna do in order to batch import a substance substance <laughs> Uh, I need to create a substance, a substance, and that's uh, what I show you. I use this image here, and I go to the Substance Alchemist. This is Substance Alchemist. You can use a student version and try everything out. It's really an amazing tool, and I did several tutorials actually about the workflow, which was very touchy and hard at the very beginning and it's much easier now. So in Substance Alchemist, Substance wants me to drag and drop an image here. And once I do this, I have four options and I'm not going to discuss the options here. I just use the AI powered, artificial intelligence powered image to material. And I press OK. Now something happens here. The program is analyzing this texture and trying to find out where the reflections are, uh, where the bumps are, etc. Comes out with a result which is really nice. We'll create a little bit more detail here, add a layer, so this icon here, and what I want to do is add some corrosion. The corrosion is massive here, and uh, but you can reduce this quite drastically so I have these points here and uh, that's fine and one more layer and I want to add some water it's all all the way down under W water and here you see the water working now isn't that nice you can raise the water level so I have most parts of this substance substance underwater or just a little bit and now I use this arrow here in order to export this texture. And uh, the export function is very powerful. Export the current view and it's an unsaved material. Currently I call it watery. And the destination part, path is in my current project. It's called, in, that's German, das Jahr 2021, the year 2021 under source images. And here I have the choice of a higher or lower resolution and I stick to this 2048 by 2048 resolution. Here I see the channels which will be baked, as it's called, with this uh, material. I don't have to think about anything here, I just click export and now Substance Alchemist exports this watery texture with the water actually and with the corrosion bumps. This takes much longer if you choose a higher resolution and much shorter if you choose a lower resolution. Now it's called watery and it's in the source images folder of my my project. Almost there. Exporting 10 out of 11. So browse your file. I could locate the file right here but I don't need this. I go back to Maya now. 
before I import the new material, I want to delete the old one. And uh, I go to the Hypershade, and here I see the materials I have, and the AI standard surface shader is the one which I mapped with a standard photograph, with that photograph you've seen, with, which was uh, too much glossy at the very beginning. So I delete this, and now this is green because it has no texture at all. I can right mouse click and uh, choose an existing material, the Lambert shader, the default shader. Now I'm sort of, I have a fresh start. And what I also do is file and optimize scene size. That means I delete all shaders which are not used here. Okay, now substance, batch import. This is watery. It's an SBSAR file which comes directly from Alchemist and I open it. And interestingly enough, nothing happens in the scene. Well, let's go back to the hypershade and here you see the substance node. It all of a sudden appeared. If you don't find it here, you can locate it here under textures Here's the Substance node, this one. The Substance node cannot be mapped to our NURB surface. I can show you, right mouse click, existing material, there is no existing material other than the Lambert shader, the standard surface shader and the particle cloud, so we don't have a Substance uh, shader currently, but we need one and that's a very simple step which we need to finalize this. I go back to my Hypershade window, I select the Substance node and in the Attribute Editor right here you see Create a Shader Network. You need to locate this, it's under Workflows and uh, it's um, for the renderer which you want to want to use, RenderMan, V-Ray, Redshift, Maxwell. And I'm going to use Arnold because it's built into Maya and we don't want to use too many external things here. Um, create Shader Network. Um, if you create it with a width of 512, it's fine because you could change this later. We have, this is the maximum we have available because this is what uh, Alchemist renders out, rendered out for us. So we create a new shader network in a, with a low resolution and all of a sudden this screen gets um, quite intense and here you see all texture parts. Water, this is the roughness for example, for the shininess. Right mouse click, existing material and now we have an AI standard surface shader which is our material and when we render it here in the Arnold render in the viewport rendering we get a much more interesting impression. You see the glossiness is only here and it ref uh, reflects the position of the camera now. I go much lower, I see more impact of this light and all these things are not shiny at all. Now let's stick to this. You see that we have a low resolution and now we go back to our hypershade and we need to find the substance node, it's right here, and change the resolution here. Instead of 512 we choose 2048. It takes a while until my digest is higher resolution so be patient here. Now it's converting the textures into EXR files, which we don't see, but which, which will be used here. And now you see quite a change happening with this high resolution. Of course it's not high enough if you get really close, but uh, you get the point. Now of course you can move the light Make it 
maybe a little bit stronger, uh, 1.5. And I think with these puddles and ponds, we don't need that high deformation here. You can evaluate the texture with a standard Arnold Skydome light, but it makes the scene much flatter in a way. So when I delete the area light, deactivate the grid, it does some kind of job, but uh, I prefer the area light just for e evaluation. An alternative would be, let's delete the sky dome light, uh, would be to introduce the physical sky. This is much better. So to wrap this up, you need a texture, you load it into Substance Alchemist, you play around with the filters, in my case especially corrosion and water, and then you load that substance into Maya using the Substance Batch Import option. If you don't see this here, go to Windows and Settings Preferences. In the Plugin Manager, you should activate the Substance plugin. And before we close, here are a few renderings which I did only based on, on this photograph which I showed you at the very beginning, this one, and uh, modifications in Alchemist and then SBSAR files in Maya using the Substance Batch Import function. Have a nice day.